Right, so here we are. Goblin Gang thrown out straight away by Dylan in the blue for kicks. Uh -huh. And the Ice Golem used by Jin TV. I told you, Ice Golem from Jin TV is the way to go. And the barrel, with the log, perfect one. I think we're seeing a lot more barrel, not just because of the barrels, but because of the Rascal that might be in play anytime. Oh, the Mortal comes out, your favorite. No, used to be me. Used to be my favorite card. I eventually switched to a Golem, but Mortar is such a good card. For what we've seen so far uh, from the Very GTV. slow, but quite a low elixir actually for compared to the expo. Does about the same thing. Yeah, those goblins do connect, and there's the goblin gun that'll take out the princess and push forward. There's the rascals in 1v1 at first today. Yeah, Dylan does have the the log as well, so not going to be the biggest problem for him. He does have his own rascals as well. There's a fireball. Yeah, that. Perfect fireball connecting to the tower. Three hits. We're still seeing a lot of new things with the Rascals, so uh -huh. bear with us while we try to figure out how the pros are going to be using them. So either you bait, either you bait the log with the Rascal or the barrel. So which one do you make the choice with? The barrel will do direct damage. If the Rascals, they will come directly at you. Yeah, those spear goblins from the Goblin Gang do manage to connect onto the tower, uh -huh. bringing it down just a little bit. It's very, very even right now. Both players are still figuring out what their opponent is going to do. The Rascals card is out. A Mortar deck. Let's see if Dylan. Gonna be that great. He There's is actually going to continue horde. with the Minion Horde along with the Miner. Let's see how well the Minion Horde and the Tornado the counter. Yeah, very good counter there. Let's the Princess Tower just take it down in one shot instead of the normal two or three. And that's a log to take out the princess almost instantly. Yes, already using it because you do want to, you do have a lot of elixirs left for yourself. So dropping down a lot of golems, baiting out that barrel. Yeah, make sure that the mortar t doesn't actually connect onto your tower at all. Very important because it does deal quite a bit of damage. So log is available for TV. He also has thrown the barrel. He's taking out with the log again. Yeah, baiting that log there with the barrel does allow the rascals here to push forward. Unfortunately, the, the mortar problem takes is them the out princess that did survive for a long, long time, doing some damage off to the long range. Yeah, it looks like Dylan here has switched to using that mortar defensively, making sure that the goblin gangs, the barrels, the princesses don't live long enough to be able to deal any damage here. Fireball, not really catching the boy in front, but still damaging the tower. The Inferno Dragon doesn't connect onto the tower. I was kind of expecting it to. It's very, very close quarters. There's the Minion Horde. Princess is going to just deal with that kind of instantly. Yeah, Princess is not getting taken out by the log. It's really hard. Dylan only have a few ways of defending. This log will get massive value getting the log and the girls. Rascal go girls right behind. Yeah, cleaned up everything, but. Jin TV does have the advantage going into this last two minutes and 30 Has seconds. Has uses that to reset because it connected to the mortal. Great right, 832 hit points left on that bottom left hand side tower. Will Dylan be able to push forward and take this game? It doesn't look like he is. He is always seemingly on the back foot. Perfect. Because of, just because of one more card now, Dylan switching off to defensive mode. Forward coming in as defense now. Jin TV with the perfect timing there on that, playing that uh, Goblin Gang. The log almost hit them, just expired a moment before. It's happened to me multiple times. Oh, draws in the miner to activate the King Tower. This was what I was expecting because he was way, he was basically waiting for that tornado every single time for that minion horde. But once it was used as a defensive tool, Jin TV actually can cycle out to counter the miner just like that. There's another zap, making sure that the Inferno Dragon changes its target, but it's not going to matter because the Ice Golem is doing a good job of keeping the aggro from those mortar, tower, mortar towers and just not allowing it to connect to the tower. The Princess here won't kill the whole gang in one, but makes it easier to clean up for the Princess Tower. Jin TV definitely has an advantage here. Yeah, with the King Tower activated, the Miner will be a lot weaker as well. Fireball, Fireball all the time hitting the tower. Does that one minute? Can you pull it up with a few more hits from the barrel and the 
I think it might be time for Jin TV to move his uh, his barrel placement because the model actually it's doing so some easy. damage to the tower now, so it brings it about one more hit will actually even out, but it goes down right before the miner. But the miner does down. come out. The rascals here played and then almost ruined the positioning. We almost had the rascal girls in front of the boy, and we never want that. Miner doesn't even get three hits, only two hits. Oh, it may actually go into a dr draw. So you only have 600 some left onto each tower. The fireball will not take him out. And it was used off to the side, hitting the mortal instead. I think JTV really wants to go for the Spear Goblin draw did this connect. Time. Did connect a few times. 531 on that tower. That's two fireballs and a little bit extra from something. But it doesn't look like we're going to get to that point. The log has been used on the other side. That opens the timing for this barrel. Will he be rascals. able to do it? Uh, so the barrel does not connect any damage to the tower. And Fireball will not finish it in time. So game one is a tie. So here we are. We have Kix's Dylan in blue at the bottom. OPGG, Jin TV in red at the top of the screen. Well, this may be an expo from Dylan. I think that's high chance. There's a high chance. Doesn't look like he's going to use Rascals here because the Rascal girls are already on the field. Uh, here we have the Rascals played by Jin TV. Baby Dragon targets the Miner. The Dark Prince is going to go down to the bats. Look at how much damage the girls do, actually. Oh, look at look that. At the damage on this tower. One on the Baby the Dragon. One to, the da one to the tower. Look at that. 866. The bats did so much work onto that tower. If they'd have connected onto the Baby Dragon. It wouldn't have been as effective <laughs> as that. One small fire onto that tower instead. But Massive trade for Gen TV. Yeah, great play. Here's the golem though. That suddenly changes everything. And Gen TV, perfect response, goes down the other side, throws out the skeleton barrel. The skeleton barrel, if it connects, does a lot of damage. There's the miner. The archers are on the field, but the skeleton barrel oh, does skeleton connect. So much damage. There's right now. no Don't answer. The baby dragon at the moment will actually. Oh, that's a that's in. A lot of the range, of course, poison banned, but Fireball will just take that out. He's onto his own push. The Golem is connecting. It's just those rascals. The girls are doing so much damage to the Golem, though. He's gonna take it out by the minion horde. A minion, mega minion. Yeah, unfortunately, this looks like it might be the end of the tower because that mega minion and baby dragon are gonna connect. The baby dragon keeps going. The two golems now split up a little bit. That tower is almost dead, but. The story is Jin TV has two towers in a very low range of HP. Uh -huh. So even if he loses that top left hand side tower, he'll still just walk down the other lane and finish the tower off. Yeah, Dylan is just buying time. He knows that, that there was a fireball from Jin TV and his right tower is going down certainly. So he wants to make a defensive move already. Even though he knows that the right side is going down regardless. Yeah, unfortunately this time the skeleton barrel didn't connect to the tower. But it doesn't matter for Jin TV because it's so low. He has to defend this push, and he has to defend it better than he did last time. Dark Prince, again, two Dark Princes in this push now. The Miner is there on the defense, not where you want it. The tower at the top left side is dead. The Bat's doing work on the defense, but the Baby Dragon will clean that up. Incoming Goblin Gang, not enough to take down the Baby Dragon, but the tower will take it out. Will it be able to take out the Skeletons before he finishes? Yes. With the King Tower also and Fireball. Get it down. Another golden push, but the miner and the rascals, they are going with the with the speed. We're talking about speed here. Jin TV so much faster with the miner and the rascal going directly, but the golem now also approaches the tower. Bought just enough time for him to actually do the damage. 30, 330 out of fireball range. Yeah, but look at that top right hand side tower on Jin TV's Red tower, oh it's going down, 724, now in fireball range. With the log and the fireball, that will be game, and GTV will bring a victory for himself in game number two. That was a close one, gotta say. That was a game about fractions. They gave an inch and they had to try and take a mile, but they were getting like an inch and a half instead. They, it was so right. close. Kicks his Dylan in blue at the bottom, has to win this game now. But OPGG Skeletons Jin TV oh, elixir collector. drops the Elixir Collector, meaning we're going to see a very heavy deck. Was I too spooky? No, I wasn't spooky. Okay. Wasn't spooky enough for me. But if we see skeletons, that's definitely too spooky for uh, me. Dylan not dropping out anything, which means that he may not have the spells in his hands at the moment. 
No fireball, no poise. No, of course, poison is banned. Sometimes you want to leave that elixir collector and just push really hard. But it doesn't look like Dylan has yeah, but the deck to punish. Yeah, that. but at the moment the electric collector drops down. That's when you want to push before the before the opponent gets the value out of it. But nothing right now be handled by it. Yeah, it doesn't look like Dylan has the. They will get the dash into it. the tower even. Oh, it's an expo. So many direct direct hits. This is a very interesting oh, expo. Man. Bandit and the mega minion will finish the tower already. A late expo. Response with the furnace from Dylan. This expo deck from Dylan is just it's a mishmash of everything and it doesn't seem to have any kind of strength right yeah, now. Against this kind of heavy push with the dash in, even the guards, he had it, yeah, he could defend it, but a perfect log to take out all the shields from the guards. He does have fireball now, but very late in his hand. He had it right when the like, elixir collector was ring dropped. I think he could have actually it. At least stopped it a little bit better. And he's already down to 920. And his golem is working, walking straight into three crowns. It doesn't seem like there's much synergy with the oh, cards that Dylan has played, so and that is over. That's three crowns, JTB, taking a win. That deck from Dylan there was. I don't know what to say. It. We right. really We're going to go ask Ja, who is to change his name. Uh, it's a bit too difficult to pronounce. No, I will just ask him how to pronounce 100% no, Prince. Of course, I didn't see that on screen. I was right. Yeah, see yeah. the golem? Yeah, kicks. 100% prediction rate. Kicks in blue at the bottom. Do you play that golem? Uh, Prince, Ice Wizard here. Oichan and Chasu chose the air route with the Lava Hound, Inferno Dragon, and Mega Minion. Rage. Uh, getting out of the range of the Inferno Dragon, the first one gets caught with the second one, so it will not be you know, having massive damage this time. Poison is available yeah, with the poison. Miner. But look at this push that's coming through. Two Mega Minions, two Inferno Dragons. That's a lot of damage on the cards, especially with that Miner in the back of the tower. Yep, already. Oh, that's too early. Way too early from Kicks. This could be it. Both these Inferno Dragons connect onto the tower Last with a flying tower. machine. That look at the damage. It. Look at the number going down below 2,000. Now, there's a Zap to refresh, but look at the damage. Insanely so done. That was possibly the second quickest game we've seen. On we 2v2? In 2v2, we saw right, a much. So here we are. Kicks in blue at the bottom, OPGG in red at the top of the screen. Once again, that Lava Hound comes out. It looks like they're playing exactly the same deck, but Kicks this time are a lot more prepared. Having a similar one. There is a Rage Balloon. So this is Lava Hound, Balloon, Rage. I assume there's a Freeze someone there. Great poison this time, but has to stop the push. Actually, get a lot of damage to the air units as well. Nicely done. Yeah, this time much better defended than last time. So now we have a game on our hands instead of the last time where it was just over far too quickly. Not just the Infernal Dragons from BGG, also the Mega Minions were coming its way to the tower. That was a real scary part. Finally, the goal limping up down. With the Prince behind again, so we're going to see a little bit more of this deck. As you can see, the Prince is pushing that Golem just a little bit quicker than it normally moves, but there's still a lot of defense here. The Inferno Dragon connects, the Mega Minion's there, the Rage comes out. Again, a similar push, but actually, Golem. The Inferno Dragon switches target. Those pups. And suddenly, there's a lot left over here again for a push. Not as much to the first first game first push they also have lots of zaps available and bat Just take care of the infernal dragon as well yeah, bats is a good choice to put into this deck making sure that that infernal dragon will drop before it gets near the tv before the tv before the tower so here we have another attempt at this lava hound inferno dragon push there is another inferno uh, another lava hound and inferno dragon in both players hands Will they be using them? This time Golem. A little bit closer to the lane. The Miner all the way on the back. We conquered with the Prince again. Now the Rage drops in here. A lot better of a push with lots of Skeletons as well. 
Golem, very healthy still, going directly to the tower now. Yeah, but it's not going to remain healthy when there's two Inferno Dragons locked on. And it does go down. Oh, the tower is dead! Yeah, Prince was actually doing some damage to the tower. It goes straight down. And having massive poison value as well again. Look at this. This is much, much better from Kix. Controlling this game now, making sure that nothing is going to finish off that tower. Bringing the Prince very low on Elixir. But still has to stop the Miner from doing damage. Seven seconds. And a new Skeleton this time. Not able to come back into a win. This Prince charging in with the Rage. But that will us into a tie with 1-1. One, one, set number two. Yeah, much, much better there by Kix. Managed to take that game. They looked in control beginning Here to Here we are. Kix in blue. OPGG in red. And I think OPGG will bring a different deck here. We already see the Lumberjack and a Rage there with the Golem. So they're going to bring their own Golems. Kicks. What's interesting, I think OPGG have this very Korean kind of mentality where if you win with a deck in the first game, you must use it in the second game. You don't really have to change. Uh, you risk that once again. Big time, but picks this time. They had their own. Ooh, that oh, fireball miss. nowhere. That was supposed to hit at least a flying machine. And it just Only whipped. the flying machine. But is there enough here to defend for OPGG? Are they going to be able to capitalize on that elixir loss? So unless they push all the way into the second tower, the flying machine would, shouldn't matter too much. But there's, there's the balloon. For OPGG and, and the tester is out of the way. It's not going to connect the balloon. They were thinking about the same thing. This will basically be guaranteed with at least a tower down already. Damage has been done with the flank machine onto the right side as well. Lots of mistakes being made for Kix. Game number three, the most important one. They lose this, they are out, and they lose the match tonight. It's insane. The fireball that went nowhere. The Tesla, which isn't in range of the balloon. These little mistakes are costing them dearly right now. Zap take most of the small units out. Oh, look at that. Perfect Zap. Double Prince there. Played to make sure that they can clean up, but... It's, it's not going to matter, I think. They are now GG Skeleton. They are actually diving in for the three crown, which looks to be a little tough. But they have all the defenses. They are in a massive lead already. Oh, luckily gets charged off that Prince. Yeah, it looks like it caught Oichan there by oh, look, surprise. Look at how happy they are on the screen. OPG Skeleton, Chasu and Oichan. The Inferno Dragon is on the other oh, side. So they're going to go all in. It looks like kicks are going the for rage. the victory here. Unfortunately, there is an Inferno One. Dragon, but it is going to get enough hits to finish that tower. Two, three. Yeah, good. Perfect. Learn to count with us here at Clash Royale. But that balloon is still alive. Got another hit onto the tower. Uh, there but is the another balloon from Uchan and the secure two crowns already. Dropping in right again with the Lumberjack. Perfect timing for OPG Skeleton as well. Great counter down to 1200. They may actually go in for all the way. They're dropping down everything that they have at the moment. The Rage goes in and that so is it. It's game one. Big mistake with the Fireball Miss onto the Flying Machine. Really hurt them from the beginning. But also the Tesla as you mentioned.